Good morning, second grade math students. How are you doing today? Great. I hope you all got a chance to play the $1 exchange game. It is um, fun, a very fun game, especially when you get to the dollar. Um, okay, and today we're going to go right into 8-2. Um, Maybe some of you have already started that. Uh, but if you haven't, that's okay. You can start it now. And eight two, you're solving problems, story problems, and word problems involving money. Um, and for this uh, lesson, it'll be coins. Okay. We are on page three hundred and thirty-three in your book. That's the beginning where the I can statement is. So for this lesson, you're going to need your workbook. And um, if you haven't already, put a post-it on the previous lessons page where the amounts and the coins are listed so you can refer to it in case you forget please do that now or a paper clip or some kind of butterfly clip to so that you can easily toggle back to that page all right so we're going to read the focus question together at the top of page 333 and i've written it for you here i can solve problems with coins. Okay, one more time. I can solve problems with coins. And we are on lesson 8-2 in our unit uh, week of money and on page 333. Okay, let me put this right here. And we're going to start this lesson just like I've asked you to start every lesson. This um, unit with skip counting. Skip counting will help you with money and it'll also help you with time. And we're going to skip count by fives first to 100. So if you have a hundreds grid, get your hundred, hundreds grid out. And that was another page I asked you to mark it on a post it in the book. And that was page 189. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and, and, and count with you, and you're going to count with me at home. And we're going to start at zero. We're going to count to 100. Ready? Zero. Closer. Five. Ten. Fifteen. Twenty. Twenty-five. Thirty. Thirty-five. Forty. Forty-five. Fifty. Fifty-five. Sixty. 65, 70, 75, 80, 85, 90, 95, 100. Okay, and now we're going to go ahead and count by tens to 100, and we'll start with zero. We'll go zero, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. Okay, and it's good to start off every lesson with that skip counting because skip counting is one of the strategies you use when you count money. Okay, All right, let's go over some vocabulary that you're going to need. And I wrote them out here for you. And the first one is cents. And cents is how you count money. And that's the symbol that you use, cents. Then we have value, and value means how much something is worth, the amount. And the, the, have the coins behind me, and they're worth. Okay, and then skip counting is a strategy you use to count your coins, and you skip count the ones, the light coins together, all the, the nickels, all the dimes first. And then uh, you count on and count up. Okay, count on means to count up from your skip counting. Once you're done with your skip counting and all the light coins, all the coins that are the same. All right? Okay, let's get started. And we are going to turn to um, the independent practice problems. And I'm going to do some of these with you. And that is page 335. Okay, so get your whiteboard if you have one. And if you don't, you can use um, a pencil and paper. And I'm going to go ahead and read it to you. Marco buys an apple for 42 cents. 
He pays with four dimes and one nickel. How much change should Marco get? So what's his change? So with the story problems involving money, it's you have to slow it down a little bit. Make it slow motion because they're all two-step problems. And they're all two-step problems because not only are you figuring out your computations, your addition and your subtraction and your difference and your sum, but and figure out what you're going to do, whether you have to subtract or whether you have to add. But you also have to figure out the value of the coins. The value of the coins. Okay, so if they say dimes, you have to know, and it takes an extra step to think that they're tens. They're worth ten cents. Okay, and if they say one quarter, two dimes, and one penny, you kind of have to add that up in your head or you can go ahead and take out that amount in your bank, okay? If you want to draw them, you can draw them as well. Remember, the size doesn't necessarily mean the, what, their, what their value is, because the smallest one is the dime, and the dime is worth 10. So their size doesn't necessarily mean that they'll have more value. Okay, so one more time, Marco buys an apple for 42 cents. He pays with four dimes and one nickel. How much change does he get? So you have to add up the four dimes and the nickel. So you come over here and you see dimes and dimes are worth 10 cents. So we have four of those. So we have 10 plus 10 plus 10 plus 10. Okay, and then we have one nickel and one nickel is worth five cents. So then we're adding a five. So all of this takes place automatically in your head when you get more used to working with money. You're more than welcome to take out 10 dimes and a nickel and count it that way, if that's help more helpful. Okay, and so now I know I have 10, 20, 30, 40, five. So now I have to write my equation, my second step. 45 minus 42 equals, and in this case, I can count back, 45, 44, 40, 45, 44, 43, 42, and I counted back three. So he is going to get three cents in change. And don't forget to write your symbol because we're talking about money, so three cents. Sometimes they want you to write it here too in the problem. All right, so that is problem number three, the one with Marco. Okay, in that space provided, feel free to draw the values of the coins right here in that space provided. Okay, so let's move on to number four, and we can do number four together. Uh-oh, I don't know what happened to my sock. Oh, there it is. <laughs> it's getting kind of used. A new one soon. Okay, so I'm going to read it to you. Trina buys a ring. Hmm, this sounds like it might be change. Uh, start unknown. She pays for it with nine dimes. She receives eight pennies in change. How much does the ring cost? So this is a change, a start unknown, because we don't know how much it costs. But we know the amount she pays for. That's, that's what we're going to have to calculate and we know she gets eight pennies back and change, so eight cents, okay? So we have to figure out what nine dimes are. Okay, and actually it's change unknown because the nine dimes goes here. And this is the amount of what she's buying the ring. Okay, so, so even for an adult like me, it's kind of confusing, you have to reread it and check again. I guess I would have known that if I would have ended up with um, a greater number here than if I would have put the 90 there. So I have to go over here and I look at uh, the dimes and there's nine of these so I can count by tens. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90. So I know that she has 90 cents. She pays for the ring and we don't know what the 
the changes. We don't know what the change is. But we do know what the difference is. So we think about our fact families and we can turn this around and we could either count up 8 plus the change and make 90 or we can use the fact family here okay because this would be the other equation so now we have all four equations of the fact family all right let me put this one up here so it makes more sense. Okay, so the fact family includes the two addition equations and the two subtraction equations. Okay, so we can count back um, from 90. So we have 89, 88, 87, 86, 85, am I there yet? No, I'm only 5, 85, 84, 83, 82. That's 8. So I just counted back and I ended up at 82. So my ring costs 82 cents. That's a cheap ring. <sighs> must not be precious metals. All right, so I'm gonna end there. And this is solving problems with coins. Double check your work. Don't forget, I almost made a mistake myself. And you double check your work by going to your hundreds grid. Okay, and we would find, uh, we would find 82. And I'll do that with a different color. and we circle 82 and then we count up how much did we say eight and then we should land on 90 so let's go one two three four five six seven eight and we landed on 90 which was where we started 90 cents and we got eight pennies back so our ring costs 82 cents okay and that's it today practice those problems um, and tomorrow we will do, um, we will start working with dollar bills, which will be lots of fun, right? Okay, you have a good rest of your day, and I'll see you tomorrow.